Hi all. So today we will talk about ultra learning. Learning is a continuous process. Though we complete our professional study or our conventional study a long time back and then we enter into our professional or work field but definitely learning will not stop. It's a lifelong continuous process that would be required for any kind of professional growth or to grow expertise in different other area. If we consider the examples of different industry leaders, most of them are considered as polymath. What is polymath? Polymath is a concept where you have a vast amount of knowledge or experience about different areas and that only can be gathered by learning, by reading more books, by learning different new things. But on the other hand, definitely whenever we want to learn fast, we want to learn quick, we need to follow certain method because sometimes not only learning but a fast and quick learning is also very important to gain the professional expertise and to gain the required amount of knowledge which is required to perform in your job. Therefore, it's very important sometime to learn not only learning but also fast learning. And today in this exercise, we will actually talk about that ultra learning. What are the steps? What are the methods that can be followed to do an ultra learning, to learn quickly, to learn fast? So at first, we will start with the concept or principle one, which is known as meta learning. Now meta learning, the meta prefix comes from Greek word meta or which means beyond. So that means, you know, whenever you are doing something which is beyond your capability or beyond you know whatever is there in you in you in the knowledge you are gathering that's beyond your day-to-day -day expertise beyond your day-to-day -day experience whatever you are doing so therefore meta learning is a process you should start spending some time to learn how to learn so therefore before going for a learning at first we need to decide about the strategy that's actually applicable to most of the things of our life we must plan something before doing something but on the other hand in case of learning as well at first we need to know what is the process which we are going to adopt before start the learning process so it said that acquisition of every skill in the beginning seems like a strenuous act definitely if i do not have a skill set and we really want to learn it definitely it's a stressful task we need to spend a lot of time we need to spend a lot of effort in order to do that but on the other hand, if we, can, if we conceptualize, if we spend some time to understand, learn, how to learn, then definitely the things would be much easier. So definitely not only learning, but also learning the process of learning is very important. So before starting any learning process, be it an online learning or a reading or maybe a classroom learning, whatever is our goal, whatever is our objective, I want to be a data scientist. I want to grow my career in cloud infrastructure. I want to be an actor. I want to uh, do something apart from my day-to-day -day life. I really want to concentrate in NGO, whatever it is, whatever you know, experience or knowledge you want to gather. At first, you need to decide a strategy. You need to prepare yourself to understand what should be the process you would follow to learn the new thing. Now, the next point is focus. Uh, the, I would give you a, a nice story. Uh, once upon a time when Bill Gates first met uh, Warren Buffett in a dinner and obviously you know it was a high profile dinner a lot of important and uh, crucial Im industry leaders uh, were present in that particular party and obviously you know there was a same question asked to both of them that what is the most important factor in your success both of them has been asked the same question and the answer was just the same that's focus so focus means you know you not really need to do something but you also need to focus on something so focus isn't easy thing because there are a lot of distraction a lot of you know negative thoughts lot of uh, other uh, things that will come into your mind but on the other hand the only thing that will make the difference uh, between a successful very successful or unsuccessful person is just the focus because the obstacles are like procrastination uh, you will uh, delay the things to do and obviously that will actually help not help you to grow that will actually uh, the primary reason of your failure so obviously the first thing which you need to do is focus what you really want to do what exactly is your aim on your life what really you want to do in your life so the focus is the primary thing that will make the difference now especially you know whenever we, we face a new challenging situation. 
something new has to be explored something new has to be learned and the most easy way you know to lose focus i don't know anything about it i am not have i do not have an expertise about it so how can i try for it but on the other hand if you really uh, go and give the effort if you really try hard definitely success will come now uh, obviously as this prime this this concept or this entire presentation has been i would say highly motivated and inspired by a book written by scott ultra learning i will actually try to quote him where he has mentioned whenever you do not have a focus not a problem at the beginning you may not have a focus as well so try to break it into small goals smaller goals so try to achieve one by one and then ultimately you should reach to your destination by focusing to your goal but definitely if you really want don't want to focus or cannot focus at the beginning of your task try to break it and definitely you know gradually you will move ahead the next principle is directions so directions is you know the ability of the learner to approach the most crucial aspect of the skills to head on so what is direction direction from the terminology from the definition you understand is one of the most important thing that is the going to make the difference between your learning and not learning anything so actually instead of doing too many things you should always you know try to understand what is the part what is the what is the process uh, you will follow to reach to your goal what are the different methodology you will follow so that is actually known as directness so you know you sometime do what you sometime follow certain shortcuts and to reach your goal that yes it is taking a lot of time i am really not happy about it i want to do it fast so that's why let me adopt some shortcuts shortcut is not an answer shortcut is definitely uh, not a way to complete or achieve your goal so definitely the proper methodology and proper road has to be followed now scott explained in this book again in a very nice way so say for example what happens most of the time we really were at just small example we try to learn new language we want to speak in a new language and what do we do we try to uh, follow different apps we try to read books sometimes we try to watch movies as well but how you can learn a language by speaking with the people who actually is the speaker maybe a native speaker maybe someone who is also a beginner or intermediate level but definitely you need to speak if you feel shy or uncomfortable to speak with someone obviously you cannot learn that language so the best way to learn is to jump into the situation and start from the beginning if you do not do that maybe you know there are certain secondary and tertiary way uh, you can do it but definitely you can not master the skill set the next point is drill drill from the you know the drill is a very famous word that is being used in military or sometime in the scout as well so this is actually the similar thing so there was a very uh, you already heard about the name one very famous politician who is also a, another famous polymath in the in the in the in the, in the beginning of the century of the last century benjamin franklin he was a famous politician he had a lot of concept entrepreneur inventor but one point is was there he always try to spectacle different things try to note down all the things and try to drill himself try to understand what are the gaps in him what are the points you know if you read the diary of benjamin franklin you will definitely understand how you act he actually has learned different things by experiencing different aspect of life and by drilling his capability and his expertise so if a person like benjamin franklin can follow a process doing your same thing many times repeating the things and actually you know that helps to improve your skill set what happens most of the time i really want to present something i really want to present in front of an audience but what i do i want to i want to make it fun i don't want to uh, you know do a hard work i want to do it in front you know alone i want to do it in front of the mirror or whatever in front of the relatives but at the end of the day you need to present you need to jump into the situation so if you do not do that definitely that will not help you to grow the skill set in you so definitely we need to jump into the situation we need to practice practice and practice and then only we can drill and master the skill set
the next point is definitely retrieval retrieval is actually here we will talk about a process of learning or a process of remembering new things so there are three different aspect i will talk here whenever we are allocating our time to learn a new thing one is passive review at first you go over and over on all your notes you create a conceptual mapping you are a human being so obviously whenever you learn you create a conceptual map and then concept and create a diagram and connect the different learning and try to remember on the other hand another process is free recall when you just read it you learn the concept and then you understand it in your own way so the according to according to the book and according to scott as well the most or efficient or the best way to learn is free recall so you know whenever you are doing a passive review or create a mental mapping it might be possible you know in the mental mapping you may lose one point you may forget one mapping point and definitely that point of time it would be impossible for you to demonstrate the entire thing efficiently but on the other hand if you do a free recall if you really concentrated on learning or understanding the point or understanding the things that has described in that particular subject then definitely it will help you to describe or demonstrate in front of any kind of audience any kind of situation and definitely the fear of forgetting the aspect or the information in the subject would not be there the next point is retention it's not only uh, you know uh, remember it's not only practicing or doing the things it's also remembering for a long time so mental residual that you can say mental residual so retention is also another important aspect where you know you will not only learn you will not only memorize you will not only present but also you will memorize for a long period of time so retention of your skill set sometime what happens we learn a new learn technology we have learned a new language but somehow because of lack of practice we have forgotten the entire concept because the retention is not there so that's why it's very important that you should concentrate on the retention points now the next point is principle 8 that's intuition or big dip before building up so most of the time you know our intuition actually helps us to understand or to learn a new thing there is a you know richard freeman was a very uh, famous scientist and he was one of the most celebrated uh, personality of the century but what is difference you know between him you know he actually has a intuition to understand different things so it's not only learning but sometimes you need to follow your intuition as well being a human being if you really grow up your intuition to understand how the things will move how the things will happen obviously it will help to learn the things in a much better way intuition cannot be built up in a day or a single day but gradually if you really want to learn something if you really have the capability of you really have the passion to learn something obviously the intuition will come gradually based on a lot of practice uh, then i would say retrieval and retention of the memory automatically the intuition will come and that will definitely help you to learn the things and to achieve something new or maybe sometime innovate something new as well now another point intuition occurs when we do things naturally so don't try to do the things artificially the best way to do the things naturally how it should happen and when you do the things naturally the intuition will automatically come beyond any comprehension so this is the secret between i you know the successful person and an unsuccessful person the intuition acts in an successful person properly on the other hand on the unsuccessful person he never have any kind of intuition so obviously you cannot predict the things you cannot predict the future you cannot understand what's going to happen in next what will be the trend set in the industry how you should develop yourself and definitely you cannot have success on the other hand it's just the opposite for a successful person now the next principle is explore outside your comfort zone in our professional area we have learned this thing don't be in our comfort zone what is your outside your comfort zone so whenever we are working in an organization or maybe you know working on a specific skill set for a long time that's our comfort zone we almost know how to manage the things even you know in your in your area uh, there there is a comfort zone and uncomfort zone you really don't want to explore you know certain things outside your area of expertise 
but what will happen because of that you will never explore something which is actually very important to grow something very important to learn the new things because if you are not exploring the uncomfort zone you cannot really learn and if you do not jump into the uncomfortable zone you cannot really learn because practicing or jumping into the situation and doing something in hand doing something practically is the best way to learn reading uh, understanding the theory is very good but on the other hand if you really want to learn you need to jump into the situation you need to experience the fact experience the process then only you can do that and if you could, do not want to explore outside your comfort zone then definitely it's not going to happen so scott really has explained that in his book how can we explain this discrepancies how does someone who uh, is starting late can jump into the uncomfortable zone of course tenacity plays a significant role in that if you really have the tenacity that's very important and that will definitely help you to jump into the uncomfortable zone but to really master something as he have mentioned earlier as well we must associate it which must associate with our goal we should jump into the situation we should do the things and then only we will learn the things very easily now at the conclusion at the end of the discussion we will say that you know the art of learning is actually a lifelong process by uh, understanding some basic principles or concept you will never learn about the 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 entire process of learning because ultimately it's you who will decide how to learn what to learn what are the gaps and how it will help you to learn so at the end of the day the true mastery will not come from any book not come from any concept it will not come from any lecture it will come within you it's actually hidden you every person is unique in nature every person has a unique capability every person has some unique concept and definitely some unique process as well so definitely it will help you to learn whenever you are truly exploring yourself now obviously uh, in the conclusion i can suggest a couple of exercise where you know uh, you can have a 30 ch 30 day challenge a 30 day uh, challenge to learn something new and explore you know try to learn and try to see you know how things are moving what are the obstacles are coming and how you can uh, use all the skill set or all the points points we have mentioned how you can uh, practice how you can jump into your uncomfort zone how you can uh, learn how you can memorize how you can retain that and try to use that and journal it in a 30 day journey so gradually you will understand you know the entire concept in your own way and that's the best way to do that the best way to learn because uh, ultimately as we have discussed earlier as well you are who is going to decide your own way it's not any book it's not any concept so uh, thanks for listening so that's all from the ultra learning lesson because again as i have mentioned learning is a continuous process it's a lifelong process it will not end in a day or two it will uh, happen throughout our life because without a learning uh, we cannot really grow we cannot really gain professional expertise so once again thanks for listening we'll come back with our next lesson very soon